Well, I'm Leslie Briggs with the City of Charlotte um, Community Relations Department with a focus in on the Americans with Disability Act. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Excited to be here. All right, and so we're going to start off by introducing you guys because, you know, not everybody knows who Altour Solution is. I think the name has been buzzing in the city a little bit. So let's go with you guys. Who is Altour and tell us why you're here. So my name is Jesus Lardizabal and I'm with Altura Solutions and we're an accessibility firm out of Austin, Texas. I'm Elaine Anderson, also with Altura and all, accessibility is all we do. So we, we've been enjoying your city for the last 10 months or so on this project and um, it's been a great journey so far. Yeah, a journey it's been. And yeah. for those who don't know, um, just to give them a little high level, the City of Charlotte does have an Americans with Disability Act program. And within our program, which is housed in the Community Relations Department, we oversee all the federal requirements um, within the ADA. Knowing that there's five titles, the City of Charlotte around this transition plan is focusing on Title II. Um, we are looking at some Title I aspects when you look at policies and procedures, but main focus is around the Title II. So let's talk about what this looks like for the city. When we look at Title II within the ADA and the work that you're doing here, let's, let's talk about, a little bit about that. Sure. So this, the city of Charlotte has certain requirements placed on them by the Americans with Disabilities Act, which is a civil rights law. Mm -hmm. And so we're here to perform a self-evaluation. And, and ensure that the city is not providing barriers to accessibility for people with disabilities. And that includes looking at city-owned facilities and looking at the city's program services and activities. And we analyze those, and again, with the, the perspective is to make sure there are no barriers to access. Pretty nice way of looking at um, how the city operates and runs their program services and activities and even how we look at our facilities. So can we talk about what the inspections look like in our facilities and what this means when you say facilities, like what are they? And sure, so you're the, we're looking at city-owned facilities. So our scope is limited to, to those city-owned facilities. So fire, uh, police department, uh, government buildings, and, and that's basically our scope. And we go in and look at your facilities and assess them and try and find any barriers that would be present for people with disabilities. We document those barriers and then we come back and discuss with the city some of the best methods to remove these barriers. Examples of those barriers would be your ramps to get into the facility, okay. um, your restrooms, your drinking fountains, um, anything architecturally that would be a barrier um, for someone with a disability. So when we talk about facilities, I know you mentioned like our fire stations, our police departments, but what about the arts? What about park and rec? Does this, is that included within your work or is it just something that we don't worry about the arts and we don't worry about park and rec? So we're looking at city owned facilities, programs and services. So parks, for example, are a county responsibility. So that is not part of the scope. Um, another example is school district facilities. Those are not part of our scope since the city really has no purview on, on those facilities. Mm -hmm. So we are sticking strictly to city-owned facilities. Now we do look at facilities such as performing art centers that are owned by the city, museums owned by the city such as NASCAR or Mint. So our focus is strictly on facilities. We are also not looking at the public right-of-way, so sidewalks and curb ramps. The city is currently doing another transition focused on that element. But for us, our, the focus is city-owned facilities. Yep. Nice, nice. And that include, that's almost about 200 facilities that we've been assessing or inspecting for, for compliance, and it's taken us about eight months to do so. We are almost done. Man, 200 <laughs> facilities. I didn't know the city had that yeah. many buildings. Yes. Right. We're a big city. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> like, we have a lot of footprint, yeah. but 200, that's... Man, you guys have been busy, right? We have, and we got to know the city, which we've been enjoying. Yeah, right. we got to see lots of ins and outs of, of buildings. All right, sounds great. So mm -hmm. when we talk about our departments, I heard you say that you're looking at our programs, services, and activities. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about what that looks like when you um, are assessing and evaluating our program services and activities? Mm -hmm. What does that mean for us? Sure, so when we started the project, we came in and interviewed staff from every department. And the whole goal is to get to know the city, get to know how the city operates. And so by doing that, we then start picking programs and services from staff as we explore what they do and how they do it. 
then we take that program or service and analyze it. And just like a facility can present barriers to access, mm -hmm. so can a program or service. So for example, if an application to a city service, if that application is not accessible, then it limits who can apply to it. So we will look at those programs and services and provide our opinion as to whether there's, there's a possible barrier for people with disabilities. And some examples of those would be how a resident would pay a utility bill. You know, if there could go to the facility to pay it in person, or if you could pay it on the website, you know, um, in any opportunity for a resident to engage with the city for what the city provides to that resident. Um, that also includes like your youth after school programs, any program that the fire or police put on. Um, so it's, it's a really huge range of um, awesome things that the city provides for its residents that we are really um, dissecting to see um, if, it's, if it's accessible for all. Nice, so accessible for all, mm -hmm. I like that. That is our, um, our theme per se in our mission around um, this transition plan is that we want to ensure our residents have access and that it includes everyone mm -hmm. and that we're not eliminating anyone to have access to our program services activities and our facilities so this work is really huge and it's really really amazing um, and so we're excited mm -hmm. excited yeah. that you all are here um, I know personally I've been able to work really really close with you guys and it's been amazing um, and I know some of our department leads and, you know, we have a really big team within our um, ADA program. We have over 100 plus liaisons, which is really big. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we have an amazing support within our department. So I'm really, really excited about what this transition plan um, will outline for us. So can we talk about mm -hmm. a little bit about what a transition plan is? Because I know we keep using the word, but let's talk about what that is and how that looks for the city and what that means. Sure, so a transition plan involves the self-evaluation that we discussed of facilities, programs, and services, but it also lets the city know where they are. It's a snapshot of where the city is in terms of accessibility. Mm -hmm. And then the city has an opportunity to then lay out a budget and a schedule to come into program access, to come into compliance with the requirements, the federal requirements. And so we will work with the city and say, here's where you are right now, here's where you need to get to, and then allow that, or work with the city to create that budget and schedule and on how to get there. It also has a, a person who is assigned, who is responsible for implementation of the transition plan. And then another key component is public input of the transition plan. Mm -hmm. So we, we are seeking public input, and it's always welcome. We want this plan to be reflective of the community and what the community wants and needs. And then the transition plan, you know, long after we're gone, the city is still going to be working on it. The transition plan will continue to be a living document that will guide the city towards accessibility. In fact, every year the city must produce a report showing progress on the transition plan. So it's, it's a huge document, right? It is. And it's not something that's like stamped and it's finished. No. But it's something that the city will continue to work on and continue to build on mm -hmm. as we build new buildings, as we create new programs and services and activities. It's something yes. that we will continue to incorporate um, into this plan, correct? Yeah. Correct. It, it's a living document and the ultimate goal is to make it part of the city's workflow yeah. so that accessibility is no longer you know, a separate item to be considered. It just becomes part of what the city does. The facilities and the budget will become part of the city's uh, planning process to moving forward and and that is the ultimate goal make accessibility just another part of how the city operates so that from now on the city meets those requirements and just stays stays on with being one of the more accessible cities in the country right and that's something that we're looking forward to um, we're looking forward from coming from a checkbox right. of like hey check we have this check we have that check but more so no, we are doing this because this is giving everyone access to everything that we have available, and we're just moving from a checklist to now it's a culture. That's right. It's incorporated in our, as you say, our workflow, yeah. mm -hmm. in the way we see things and view things as disability impacts us all, right? It's not just at birth, as it's not just in your later days. It could just be, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Break your ankle, right? And today, you're a person um, who's temporary with a disability. Yeah. However, we want to ensure the city remains accessible and offer all programs to everyone, correct? 
correct. That's right. We're also, um, a part of our scope is to provide some training. So we've incorporated a really large, um, hefty training module for the employees, again, to just shift that culture, to get them thinking all the time accessibility is an important thing. It's not that checkbox, um, and just to be more mindful about it. So we're excited to um, get all the liaisons trained up and it just be a normal part of their daily life of thinking of everybody. And everybody loves training. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Everyone loves training. We love learning something new. Um, and what's really cool is, you know, we've worked really, really close. So, you know, we get to train the trainer. So it's not like you just train one person and it sits on the shelf. Like this is something that mm -hmm. people can grow with and, um, and build on. And it's not just, oh, one day and right. sits to the side. Yeah. But yeah. now more and more people, because if I'm not mistaken, the city has like over 7,000 employees. So, you know, we can't train all of them at yeah. the same time. But, you know, we're able to have the access and the opportunity to train the trainers, right? right. So, you know, we, we've talked about what this ADA um, transition plan is, the work that you're doing here. So let's talk about how can I get engaged? Like, here I am a resident seeing us on Go the Gov Channel. Right, mm -hmm. um, hearing this amazing chat that we're doing around ADA, but how can I engage with you guys? Like, how can I find out more information? So, you know, the I think one of the best ways is kind of putting it back on you. Contact, you know, Leslie, and get engaged through there. But the best, or the most important thing for us to get right now is feedback and input. We are going to make several recommendations, but we don't want to make them in a vacuum without input from the public. And so if you have a specific opinion about accessibility, where you can or maybe have an issue of getting to uh, a program or service that's important to you, that could use some improvement, we need to hear about it. Or if you use a program or service that you really enjoy and don't want it to change, then let us know that as well. So yeah. public input on, on priorities, on uh, with the programs and facilities that you use would be very helpful. Nice. And you're right. You're putting it back on me. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Um, and you're right. You can definitely find our information on um, our website um, at www.charlottenc.gov backslash ADA. And on that website, you know, our residents will be able to locate where they're able to do ongoing input. Like you said, Chewy, it's back on me <laughs> as far as where they're going to get all that information. Um, and so on our website, it will house all the detailed information about all our upcoming open houses that we're going to have around the transition plan as well as where they can locate the survey right. to be able to go online to take the survey if they're unable to attend um, and also opportunity where they can sign up yeah. to receive updated information on the city of Charlotte and the ADA program and what we have going on and where we're at today right Correct. Um, so all tour thank you yes thank you thank, thank you for you having for us partnering with us to help get the word out about this project. They we're really excited to be here. Yeah, we're super excited. We know we got a 20 month project ahead of us, um, but we got a lot of work to do. And with you all support and help, the city is gonna be a better city, yes. um, a city where we're equal access for all mm -hmm. and everyone can enjoy our city. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So thank you. Thank you, appreciate it. To learn more about what the city is doing and provide valuable feedback, please visit us online at charlottenc.gov slash ADA. Connect with us, and together we will build a stronger community for all.